Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. So we've got a very interesting topic today. And so look, let's get back to a little bit of basics while we're waiting for everyone. The point of these coaching sessions is to move your choices into flow. The point of these coaching sessions is to move choices into flow. Okay. The second half of each coaching session, we do a recode. Sometimes we do the super conscious commands. Uh, sometimes we do a meditation. Sometimes we, 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 do, we do other things. Okay. And the first half of each coaching session, uh, the coach, myself today, uh, we, we share some insight. And it's, it's important uh, to realize this is that we're going to spend half of the session sharing some insight or some information and then the other half doing the recode. Now, sometimes you might just want to join to get some new insights and you don't really feel like doing a recode. So maybe, you know, hey, I'll, I'll, uh, uh, I'll just jump on it while you're in the car. You can listen to the first half in the car. You see, the first half, we're just talking. We're just sharing information that we think is 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 vital or true or important and there's no there's no structure to what we what we're choosing to to share in the coaching sessions it's important to realize that we're just tuning in to what we think is necessary because in the university is the 12 weeks you know there is a 12 week specific flow that you can go through it'd be very boring for us as coaches if every single session uh, we had to be on some sort of cycle so we choose what we want to share. And then we do the recode because the recode or, or shifting you, that, that's what's going to allow you to move your choices forward. Okay, does that make sense? Now, we also have the lenses earlier in the week. Lenses is very important. It's just basically planning, uh, you know, how you're going to be in the creation for the week. So it's, it's very easy, you know, to, to create. We must remember simplicity. What, do I, what would I love to create? How would that feel? Where am I now? Let's, what's in the way, re remove what's in the way and then, and then take action. Action is the highest form of, of communication with yourself and with the field around you. So we must always remember to take the action. Take the action, take the action, follow through. We, we, we are here to create. We are here to, to turn our thoughts into things. And if you sit there trying to imagine it into reality and then not doing it, you're actually creating a counter instruction based on your inaction. Does that make sense? You're creating a counter instruction. I would love to be out exercising and then you sit at home and do nothing. It doesn't work that way. The meditation isn't going to overtake the fact that you didn't go out and do it. Many, many people who, you know, they, they want to change uh, a health, let's say a, a health uh, current reality that isn't in their desired reality. Okay, let's say that their health current reality isn't in their desired reality. So what they do is they try to shift this by creating a desired reality to, uh, to basically fix the health thing. But they never get into the end result, which is what would they be doing if they had that healthy body? Does that make sense? I remember I worked with Katerina. Katerina might be on. Hey, Dixie. I remember working with Dixie as well, actually, um, around you know physical things. And it's, it's what would I actually do when I have it? Like, what is the true end result? So you get into the end result. Maybe it's going for, you know, I'd go for runs or I'd go for walks or I would, I would be swimming more or I would be outdoors or I'd go dancing or I would be... Oh, there she is. Katerina is here. You're doing it now. Yeah, good. That's cool. That was a big, I still remember that session. It's recorded in the, in the superconscious um, healer program, isn't it? Yeah, it was a bit, it was a great session. I remember it. Uh, or maybe we did it one-on-one. -on -one. Actually, we did it one-on-one, -on -one, didn't we? Yeah, we did it one-on-one. -on -one. That's right. We did it one-on-one. -on -one. And so uh, we, we get into that end result. Okay. And once you get into that end result, it's then about removing what's in the way, but then you've got to You've got to go and take action, even if you think, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to handle that. You see, let's say, 
Yeah, it was one on one. That's right. Let's say that you, you know, you, your end result is, you, you know, you want to be physically active again, or you want to go dancing again. But you know, maybe you've got like a, a hip that's sore, or a knee, or an injury, or a this, or a that, or something that you feel is inhibiting. So you go into the field, you step into the end result, and, and it feels really good. You, you come back and you ask what's in the way, and you clear it. And let's say you only get your resistance down to like a three or a four. Okay. Get down to a three or four. So, oh, wow, that was, that was a big shift, Chris. Thank you so much. And then you just go sit on the couch and eat Doritos. You don't do it. You see, you, it, by not doing it, you, you're not actually saying that you really wanted it. And so, so yesterday I was working with someone in our scale up program, which it's a business program we have for, for people um, who really want to take their coaching to the next level. And it was obvious this person I was working with. And I said to her, well, what's the, what's the thing you need to do to actually ground this in reality? Well, I need to do, oh, well, I need to do this. I need to do all these things. I need to do all, I've got to do all these things. So what's, what's the one thing you can do? Well, I should shoot my video. But if I shoot my video, then I need to have my email responder and I need to have my, and I need to have my, just do the video. You see, oh, I really want to, I really want to, you know, uh, Go, go dancing and I will just, just go down to where dancing happens and just be there. Maybe you do, maybe you just step on the dance floor once. Maybe you just sit on the sideline. Maybe you just do the warm up. You see, but you're doing it. You're going. You see, you're there. And maybe it's exhausting, but you're there. Do you see what I'm saying, guys? Do you guys get what I'm saying here? It's like maybe just walking to the gym, going in and, and being, and maybe that's all you need to do because here's what I want you to get is uh, momentum is contagious. When you set up a structure, as soon as the momentum starts and you release this current reality, it's going to ping you forward. You see, you create the structure. As soon, if you hold the structure, you remove all the resistance, but you hold the structure. Do you see how the tension is kind of in equilibrium? But as soon as you go here, there it goes. Someone's typed in, uh, Julia Cameron would go sit in her studio and make nothing. Yeah. For example, I just finished a book, right? And, you know, I just got, I think we're laughing about it the other day. I got my second edit back and I haven't actually done any more of the editing. But, but what I did to write the book is I didn't make it a big thing. I just would every day, I just had an hour and I would just write for an hour. And that sounds so simple. Doesn't it sound simple and trivial? Just go and write for an hour. But I would, I'd turn off all Facebook, everything else. I would just sit and I would just write. I'd say, look, I'm just going to write. And most of the time the writing was crap. Sometimes I thought the writing was so good. I would post little updates to Facebook and it just felt good, but I'll just do it for an hour. You see, and maybe for you, an hour is too long. Maybe you go, well, I couldn't write for an hour. Maybe you just do 10 minutes. And so, so this is a very useful tool to use. Okay. Because as you're creating, uh, you know, something big, you know, a marathon starts with the first step. You see, momentum is contagious. And, and as Dermot's put in there, even if it's a wrong step, you know, even if it's not the right action, okay, what does taking the action tell your superconscious? I'm serious about this. Not serious. Uh, I'm committed is a better word. <laughs> not i'm serious mm, i'm committed but but just make sure you really get that like we, we can do all the work here in the field and then if you create a counter field of inaction or of not following through you you'll simply find yourself having to continually just 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 do work and wonder well what am i not doing and so sometimes lenses is so crucial Take this big lens and say, well, what's just the one thing I can do today? Because one things multiplied turn out to be something huge. So it's a, it's, it's a little bit of the theme today. Well, what's just the one thing that will move you forward? What's just that one thing? What's just that one thing? What's just that one thing that will just move you? What will just shift you? Just get you in that place? You know, is it just... Uh, is it just ordering, uh, you know, one meal a day that's vegetarian or one healthy thing? Or is it just waking up in the morning, you know, 10 minutes earlier and, and walking around the block? What is that thing that just gets you moving? Not, not trying to diminish all the things that you need to do. Does that make sense? We're not trying to diminish it. We're just simply acknowledging that, you know, in order to bake the cake, the first thing you have to do is get all the ingredients. So it's not diminishing all the other things you have to do. It's just allowing your brain to uh, focus on just just the first thing 
just the first thing. And so, you know, maybe you're wanting to, to shift a health challenge. Well, the most important thing if you want to create health is to decide what are you going to do with that health? Hmm, that's interesting, isn't it? The, the, the thing that you, it, what are you going to do with it? What's the real end result, right? What is that? What is that? Because it's, it's health for something, isn't it? What do you want to do with it? How do you want to be in it? So anyway, good chats, good stuff. I'm excited to be here. Look at all these amazing souls that have just joined on. Uh, very cool to have you all here. Very cool to have you all here. Nice. So uh, the, the theme for today is I want to talk about conflict with integrity. Conflict with integrity. And, and I started to talk about this a little bit. As you're a creator, you're going to come across times when you feel conflicted conflicted in choices and conflicted with other people. There's going to be conflict. Now, conflict is something that many people will shy away from. You know, they don't want to, they don't want conflict. They don't want an argument. So they'll just, they'll play the smaller role or maybe they'll get defensive. And so when we're in conflict, it's something that can really knock us out of our end result. And what I've experienced with many people is this uh, disagreements or conflict, especially with other people, uh, really, you know, really causes them to, 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 to play a small game, you know, so that they're, they're trying to create something and they, they want to make sales and someone says, no, I don't want to buy from you. Uh, you know, or someone, or you're trying to have a great relationship and there's a conflict in the relationship or there's a conflict with your kid. And so a, a lot of what we want to create as human beings includes other people, <laughs> doesn't it? Includes other people. And with other people, they're going to have, they're going to be self-conscious, true. They're going to have a super conscious, which they might not have any idea about. <laughs> but they're going to have a self-conscious ego. They're going to have desires and wants. And, 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 you know, we all think, you know, we all are the hero of our own show. You know, we're all, we all believe we're doing the right thing. We all have our own goals. And so as you, as you come together, especially in relationship, especially intimate relationships, you know, you, you're, you're unified in, in many areas, but I'm sure that there's, well, there is in my marriage, there's, thought, there's things that you don't necessarily agree on. There's conflict. And, and it, it's, it's about allowing there to be conflict, disagreements, differences, but still staying in integrity. Buckminster Fuller has a great word that he made up, and it's called tense segrity. Tensegrity, and it stands for tension with integrity. And uh, it was one of the things uh, that I really studied a lot of uh, Bucky, Buckminster Fuller. He's amazing. He just an amazing guy, and he created all sorts of uh, geodesic domes and amazing, amazing uh, thought patterns. Uh, I got a lot of a lot of wisdom from him about you know you create what you want, you don't try to fix what's already here. And anyway, uh, ten tensegrity is a really cool word. Um, he trademarked it, so I wasn't able to use it in any of our stuff. But uh, if I could, I would have used Ted Segrity a lot, which is having uh, tension in a structure, but also being an integrity. And integrity is being uh, being as it is, you know, being in the, the in integral part of what's creating. It's, it's a beautiful term. And anyway, uh, I highly recommend you go and uh, look at any of Bucky's stuff. He's uh, some, some of it's a bit dense and hard to read, but Buckminster Fuller was, a, was an amazing, amazing guy, really. Amazing guy. And so, so allowing yourself to experience conflict and being able to rise above it and focus on the obvious action is going to become a, uh, uh, a very, 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 uh, very useful. Uh, it's just going to be a very useful very useful tool of, of how you do it. So, so I want to talk about that and we'll do a recode and stuff um, afterwards. So, so how do you do this? Okay. I started explaining this as much as I could yesterday. Okay. So we're going to use my, my, uh, my, my pen as an example as a, and we're going to use it as a pendulum. Okay. And I started talking about this, so I'm going to shortcut it, but I want to make sure I do some of the basics so that those who weren't on my call yesterday get it as a pendulum swings. Uh, if you're down the bottom here, Okay, if you're down the bottom, you're going to get knocked around. Okay, as as you rise up, the same the same knock that if you were here moves you this much, only moves you only a slight bit at the higher you rise. And I want you to see that this is flat at the top. Okay, 
Yeah, yesterday's everything's always on replay. So as you rise up to the top, you arrive at a flat point. This is the field, right? The unified field where everyone is. Okay, so think about a field being there, and then all of us have access to it. Does that make sense? So this is the superconscious field, uh, or or above, you know, whatever you want to call it, the source field, and we all have access to it. Okay. And now we all have a lower self all the way down here that gets knocked around and then we have a higher self, okay? And it's important to realize that in any moment, we can be on any level of, of you know, self-conscious or super-conscious. We can be at any part of it. The further down here, the more we get knocked around, okay? So if you're experiencing yourself getting, let's, let's use the word knocked around, like you're the bottom of the pendulum, like you're... You know, you're feeling all sorts of emotions and it's like, it's like, a, you know, those wave pools. Have you guys ever been in one of those wave pools where, you know, like you go to a water park and you, or maybe you've even just been in the waves or you could even just experience it's like, you're like, you're getting banged around. You're at the bottom. Oh. If you experience that, you're taking, you're having the perspective of, um, you know, the, the, the self-conscious. The self-conscious is taking it all personally, okay? And by what I mean when I say you're taking it personally is you have misappropriated your power into something else, okay? You've mis misappropriated, meaning you've, you've put your power onto that thing, okay? And you've given your power away. And so let, let's say you have a disagreement with your, with your spouse or a disagreement with a business partner or, 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 or you feel in conflict with someone else and you're taking it personally. You see, you're saying, well, this person is upsetting my day. How dare they say that? Or this person is, is taking away what I want to create. What you've done is you've given your power away, okay? And so it's very important that we're able to experience conflict with integrity and integrity means being integrate being in what it is you want to create so this is important so you're going to experience this a lot there's no way for two humans and multiple humans not to be able to interact without you know people getting into some sort of conflict and ideas one of the things that i actually ask for in my team in my leadership team i actually ask for conflict to happen, okay? The thing I do in our staff, our team, is I say, guys, we need to have conflict because if there's not conflict, my opinion is, is that there's submissiveness and dominance and that people are just accepting it and they're not fighting for their viewpoints, okay? So I have a leadership team of, uh, of six people and if all six people always agree on everything all the time, what does that mean to you? If, if, if there's six people always agreeing all the time, what does that mean? It's a dictatorship, isn't it? Though, oh, yes, Chris, that's the way. Yes, Chris, yes, Chris. If my leadership team are not disagreeing with me and arguing for what they think, I, I don't believe that they're engaged. There's no honesty, okay? There's a really good book called The Five Dysfunctions of a Team, Five Dysfunctions of a Team. And uh, the second thing is uh, is one of the dysfunctions is, that there's, uh, there's no conflict. And it was a really big thing for me because for a while, I guess about 18 months ago, uh, you know, if anyone disagreed with the way that I wanted it, I would sort of say, no, nope, this is the way, this is the way we want it. And, and I realized that I was not gaining access to all the smart people that were there because it was always, you know, the way that Chris wants it, right? And then that was part of my growth and everything else. So what, what I had to realize is that conflict is needed. Here's what I believe about conflict. I believe someone else is passionate about the end results. I believe they care. Have you ever been into a point where you just simply don't care? There's no, if you don't care, there's no conflict. Isn't that true? You, you don't care. You're not going to, you're not going to argue. You know, there's no, no point. It's, it's, only, it's only when you care. It's passion. I, well, this is the way I think it should be. This is what it is. It's conflict. So, so, I, so I really, really like it. So now I look for it. When there's conflict, when there's, there's this, it, there's passion, it's, it's good. But, but in order for there to be conflict with integrity, everyone involved in the conflict must understand this. 
is that we must understand it. We must get into, in, into what I'm going to explain now. But in intimate relationships, many times uh, there's an absence of conflict. And, it, and, it's, and it's because people shy away. They think that conflict is bad. If someone's in a relationship and they can't have conflict, if they can't have an argument, are they, is, are they safe to be themselves? Are they safe to share their, if they, if they can't actually say, this is what I think, and this is what I think, and, and there be this, can you see that, that, that someone's not being truthful about what they think? It, it's, not, it's not a cohesive team. So conflict with integrity, very, very, very important, is, is being able to have conflict, but in, with integrity, not having degrading anger over the top conflict. So here's, a, here's my tool for really having conflict with integrity. So the first rule is, is everyone must understand this work. Everyone, everyone must, and so uh, many of you ask about this, you know, I've got a husband or I've got a wife or I've got this person and, you know, like I really want to get in trend results and all these things. To me, I think it's, it's absolutely vital that all humans have this work. <laughs> I, I just truly believe it. And so, so, you know, make sure before, before I go into all of this is that you've got to have people that you're working with that, that understand this. Like if you're trying to be in a business partnership with someone that doesn't end, understand end results or structure or creation, like they're, you know, they're literally handicapped and it'd be very difficult. I think the, the level of education that you guys are receiving here to really be able to operate with someone who doesn't, you know, can't be on that same vibe. Anyway, so so that's a that's a big thing. So so get them in here, you know. Uh, the, the but but here's how I here's how I deal with it. Okay, uh, whenever there's a conflict, the first thing that everyone must decide on is the end result that everyone's creating. Okay, so so step number one is to go. Okay, well, what is the end result we're after? Many times a conflict, people are talking about different end results. And, and just to clarify, just to clarify the end result together can sometimes realize where the confusion is. Okay. So I've got quite a few business partners and, and they have busy lives and everything else. And we might catch up once a week or sometimes only once a month. The first thing, whenever there's, when it, first things first is let's get into the, the end. What are we actually creating here? So like there's an argument happening. There's a conflict. Okay, cool. What, what, are, we, what are we here to create? What are we up to? Same in a marriage, same in, what are we here to create? Okay, we're here to create a happy, fun life. Okay, well, we're here to create, uh, you know, maybe you're trying to understand a financial decision. What are we here to create? So that, that's step one. Okay. S step two is actually ensuring that everyone is committed to one end result. So there's a very big difference between uh, two people saying that's the end result and then step two actually saying, well, I'm, I'm all in on that end result as well. See, the, this is where the passion can then really be great because if you've got two people who are passionate that are committed to the same end result, this is absolutely brilliant, okay? So step number three is to allow everyone to share their perspective. So you can have this conflict. This is what I think, and this is what I think, and this is what I think, and this is what I think. When you are allowed other people to have their opinion and have their perspective on what they're creating, that is a great thing. However, many of you, Will, will shy away from conflict. So I want to ask you, what do you believe about conflict? When someone else has a different, different opinion to you, how do you feel about it? What goes on for you? Because conflict is vital. Unless you think you know everything and you're always right, other people's opinions are absolutely important. Okay, a absolutely vital, absolutely important. Well, and I, and it, I believe we're in this world where people are so conditioned to it's their way or the highway. You know, on Facebook, uh, you know, you only get people that, you know, like you or hate you. Okay, so, so here's what I want to ask you. When you experience conflict with someone else's opinion of what they think is true, how does that feel to you? How does it feel when someone else has a different, can you be friends with someone who has a completely different opinion on something? Or do you, like most people, feel a need to make them wrong? Hmm. 
Hmm. Yeah, it's 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 interesting, isn't it? It's very interesting because the idea that that we can't have conflict or we can't have a discussion is, is very big or the idea that I want to try to win it or be right. Uh, none of it is actually useful. See, what's useful is if someone has a differing opinion, what's useful is to be able to get all the information from them and what they think. And so it's, it's a very important tool, actually. Uh, some of you on this call go, oh, Chris, I don't really need to hear this. But I want you to know conflict is a very useful tool. If all you do is find confirmation in what everyone else says, if everyone just says what you think, that's actually a big problem. Because until you've found someone who thinks something different, you really haven't explored the topic. And there's enough stats to prove pretty much any point. Make sense? You, you can find statistics to prove anything. Okay. And people are really good at creating a little meme and adding some statistics, and it makes it sound really good. And really, but how do you really get all the information so you, you're there? So, so anyway, uh, how you respond to conflict is really going to matter for you to lead and create end results that you love because a lot of your end results are going to involve other people. So I want to ask you, conflict, being in conflict and still staying in your end result emotion. Okay, so here's the choice. I want to be able to experience conflict and feel good about it. I want to be, feel good about conflict. I want to feel good that other people disagree with me. I want to feel good uh, in conflict. I want to ask you out of 10, how much resistance do you have to feeling good in conflict? How much resistance? We've got some tens. A guy do not feel good and confident would be a 10. And zero out of 10 says, you know, basically I'm a lawyer. I do conflict all day, you know. <laughs> yeah, how, do, how do you feel? 10 out of 10, like you do not want to be around someone disagreeing with you. You get pissed off. You get annoyed, you know, or you just shy away from it. 10 out of 10, definitely. They're just like, I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to go the other way. Uh Someone is three people, <laughs> or sometimes three. <laughs> Just teasing you. Looks like a misspell. Um, yeah, well, that's all right. Hey, Karen, good to see you. Depends who it is. Yeah, so so it's it's an interesting topic. You know, uh, it's just a very interesting topic because. We can see a lot about our self-conscious identity with how we relate to others who disagree with our belief systems, disagree with what we believe, disagree with, uh, <laughs> yeah, I thought so too, mate, uh, disagree with, 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 with what we want to do. Or the other thing is we so avoid conflict that we're just submissive. Yep, whatever you think. All right, I don't want to fight about it. <laughs> you know, I'm not fighting about this, just whatever you think. You know, don't raise your voice at me. You know, how do we how do we orientate to that? It's, it's, it's very important. You know, do we shy away from it? Are we the aggressor? It has to be my way. Do we just not want it? Do you live in a bubble where no one's ever no one's ever passionate about the end results? Is is arguments allowed? Is it allowed that people disagree with passion, or is that the only way? You know, do people always just have to fight for their way? Really interesting. And so anyway, I'd, I'd like to do a little bit of a recode on this if you guys are up for it. And the end result is that you, you choose to be, to be um, stoic in conflict, to be uh, in integrity in conflict. That, that's, that's, what, that's what I would like to work on with, with everyone today. It was, it was uh, very obvious to me that it's important to stay in your end result be able to feel completely, completely happy as others are disagreeing with you or even as others are annoyed at you and just just being happy that that is, it's not personal. It's, it just is what it is. Uh, stoic, stoic, it's uh, Google, Google the word stoic. Stoic means, un, uh, you know, it doesn't mean this, but I would describe it as, you know, you're, you're unmoving, you're unaffected, you're just, you're just centered, you're just, a, a stoic is a, a philosophy. 
uh, anyway, uh, if you don't, if you haven't heard that word before, I'm sorry, I used a word uh, that you might not know. Just just search what is a stoic. Yeah, you, you'll find it. Yeah, unflappable. Okay, so so if everyone's happy, um, you know that's that's what I would like to do today, and and, uh, and the reason is is I as I see it a lot. As creators, you've got to have other people. And if you let other people knock you out of, uh, oh, thanks, Harley. Harley's put a great description in there. It's, it's really good. Thank you. Uh, is allowing yourself to not get caught up in all the personalness of thinking that there must, you know, this other person doesn't believe in you and doesn't da 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 and all this other rubbish, just going, hey, that's fine. Imagine how good it would be for you to be in conflict and disagreements and just staying in integrity with your end result. Uh, so, so really step one, and, and we're going to do the recode now, but step one is, is getting everyone on the same end result. Step two is making sure everyone's committed to the end result. And then step three is being able to listen and understand other people's perspectives non-emotionally. And this is how to have conflict with integrity. Okay, so it's, it's actually really simple. The biggest thing is what we're about to do is to, to use the super conscious work to step into an end result of being unflappable, unchangeable in the face of conflict. And many of us uh, on this call, you know, we grew up in households where we weren't allowed to disagree with adults. Disagreeing with adults got you told off. So we just decided that's not allowed. And then we found relationships the same. And we just took that childish thing and we moved it across. Many things that is true in childhood is not true as an adult. You know, as a child, look, you kind of need to not disagree. You, you know, it's not going to get you anywhere. Uh, you got to be a child. <laughs> you got to be a child. You got to listen. You got to be told what, how the world is. And, and that's just part of it. But, but as an adult, you, you know, you're not a child anymore. <laughs> So it's important. And then others, you know, uh, I was always told to have an opinion. What's your opinion on that? Uh, my household was very opinionated, um, unless it was about what I was being told to do. <laughs> you know, you just, just do it and don't answer back. 